Hello and welcome to A Little Too Quiet. This is the Ferndale Library Podcast, brought to you by the friends of the Ferndale Library. My name is Jeff Milo. I'm joined here by Kelly Bennett. And we're also joined by a visual artist of mixed mediums, Dahlia Reyes, who is going to be exhibiting here in this library very soon later in this year of 2020. And that's right. This library hosts art exhibitions throughout the year, and we have really excellent art receptions where you can meet these local artists, you can hear their story and see their amazing work. And we have a lot to talk to about with, uh, with Dahlia because she does some amazing work, including, including very recently the Cosmic Disco Vortex. Yes which you hung at the UFO factory. Who doesn't want to go to anything called the Cosmic Disco Vortex? I know. <laughs> <laughs> but you, Who but there like was the Cosmos and Disco <laughs> together. <laughs> you also had a uh, Planet Disco. Yeah, that was at the Motor City Brewing Works. And a Venus Garden. Yes. Rainbow Body. Yes, yes. Rainbow Body at Ann Arbor. I'm, yeah, I'm awesome. sensing a theme of a lot of energies here. Yes, all like cosmic be a little bit of new agey my mom like grew up in a very new agey household Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so i got a little bit of that too (laughs) and a little bit of the surrealism through um these album covers that were super influential uh listeners can't see obviously because it's a podcast but there's a giant (laughs) book on the table and it is mati and the music yes and it's all 52 of the record covers. A lot of folks would recognize the work from Miles Davis for yes, sure. Yes, Miles Davis, Bitches Brew. Yeah, amazing stuff. And this yeah. is an influence for you. Yes, I think that I think when I was growing up, I think I was very intrigued by the imagery, and it was it was actually a Santana record cover called the Braxis. Mm-hmm. And um, my dad was a super huge fan. You know, had all of their records and. That that one in particular was like really stuck in my mind, and I thought it made me think of like how art could just be, you know, so dreamy. It's also how I kind of came up with a dreamy lover uh, moniker. Mm-hmm. So I'm yeah, seeing based on what I saw cosmic. on on display, especially a piece like like this. Again, this is not good for for radio or podcasting, but Exterminating yeah. Angel from 1968. Just the arc of all of those orbits over that mountain. Right. I'm seeing that come in. You know, such incredible detail yeah. in everything. Um, yeah. Such disciplined work. So that that was my influence. Like, there are a lot of amazing artists, old masters, like mm-hmm. you know, Raphael, mm-hmm. Michelangelo. But I think for me, it was like what my parents had hanging up at our, at our house growing up. That was like, oh, the introduction. Mm-hmm. That and in children's books. Really? Obviously, children's books, because it was, you know, they were so creative growing up. Oh, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, yeah. I might be mispronouncing this. Uh, there was an illustrator from the 60s and 70s. Was it Eric Carl or Eric Carly? Car- yes. The, the gentleman who made the Hungry Hungry yes, Caterpillar. Yes, I was going to, yep. Yeah, and I was going to co- try to come up with his name, too. Mm-hmm. I'm glad that you tried. Mm-hmm. Very formative picture yes. book for me. Mm-hmm. I have to just rattle off some some resume points for you. You've been an artist for more than fifteen years now, yes. or a, should I say, a professional artist? Right, professional. Been, but I've been making art right since very young. Like um, I don't know. I guess like how old are you when you're in like first, second grade? Six. Yeah, when you're young. Yeah, yeah I have like old drawings from that long ago. It was wow. just. But my, it's it runs in my family. My grandfather was an artist. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. And stuff was hanging in your yep, in your work. home. Works by your parents? Mm-hmm. Not my parents, my my grandfather. Wow. Sorry. Yeah. Wow. My mom's dad. So I think I inherited some of that through them. Mm-hmm. And also just because my parents were very I don't know, they loved they loved to host people. Mm-hmm. They liked like I don't know, they loved music. Mm-hmm. So I think that was a big thing. And just bringing people into bringing a space. Bringing people into a space which you could talk about. I mean, I want to talk about a lot of a lot of things that you do, but you were the exhibitions and event manager for Detroit Artist Market. Yes, for three years. Oh, really? Yeah, wow. I did that for three years. Yeah, yeah, that was that was great because that was that was like right after I was working at at uh, the fellowship program, the Kresge Arts in Detroit program, mm-hmm. and I was also installing work in hospitals at the time. Oh, really? I was yeah, I was placing art in all of it would have been Oakwood Hospitals then, which is now Beaumont, I mm-hmm. think. But I was placing all of their art, and they had like 12 little small galleries, and I would install the art there. And I thought that was really great, because you get to see 
what you know everyday people and how they respond to art you know they don't have this art background right. that they're like oh they, you know there's like this critique thing that happens if you know about art and you know, you know it's a i don't know <laughs> right like music like music too right I, so it for lack good. of a better description it's just like on a gut level they right. walk it's up very to it human. they see it yes they knew it's mm-hmm. good it makes them feel good right they don't have right. to know the technique and that was kind of an uh, influential to to what i started making after that Mm -hmm. um wanting people to kind of be in the moment and experience things and not being so not being so specific like those surrealist paintings are very specific they're so tight and beautiful and i like that but i also like the idea of having the viewer dream that up for themselves yes yes so Uh, i tend to go back and forth yeah I, so. I like that imagery of a vortex, of a mm-hmm. disco vortex. I feel like something that's something I'm getting lost in. Yeah. That you're inviting me into. Right. And yeah, it's kind of like up to you. Because I, I never really, you know, you go to, do you guys go to um, many museums? Do you like going to museums? I do. You know, and I remember growing up and going to one and thinking like, coming across something very conceptual and being like, well, what the hell? You know, I'm being like mad, like (laughs) being so mad. Like, what are they trying to do here? (laughs) And why do they get to do this? You know, and it's about, you know, the concepts and the thought process. And that I really like that. I really like that you can do that as an artist, help people kind of think in an abstract way. Mm -hmm. But also I don't like it when it gets too far out there. You know, I like to be able to meet people. Right. And that's why I kind of like artists like, I love the surrealism, but I also like like Keith Haring because I felt like his, it was very approachable. Like you could, you know, come across it and it was just kind of friendly, but it could also talk about very serious, serious right. things like AIDS and all these things. Right. So, so. making a connection with the viewer of the work is very mm-hmm. important. And yes. You, you, so you would be against... Uh, a banana duct tape to a wall. Yes. For example. <laughs> it's just so. not for me. You right. Know? Right. You know, you, I don't know. I like when you feel like you can take away something. Yeah. From the experience. And also, I don't know. I think visual art is just, you know, one facet of, you know, creativity, just yeah. like music and dance. And I like to be able to meld experiences if I can. Yeah. So we talked yeah. about you being a six year old. Yes. And we've talked about you getting out of, out of art school but yes. i mean were you also just through your high school days also also creating creating through art? my high school i think my high school times it was like that's when i needed art the most but i was making the least art at okay. that time okay i was kind of like a bad kid Uh-oh. <laughs> what school did you go to i went to western international high school okay. in, in southwest detroit mm-hmm. it's a really great school I just, I don't know, I, I was like a rebellious kid. Mm-hmm. I always was a passionate art lover and into it, but I felt like not challenged in the art department there. So mm-hmm. I kind of was just like, whatever, I'm too cool right now, or <laughs> whatever, mm-hmm. however you are in high school. Right. But it wasn't until after that that I got really serious. And I'm still very close with, uh, with a lot of those first uh, professors that I had for art class. That's great. That's yeah. great. That's a tricky the time. Mentorship, yeah. To be that yes. age, because a teenager naturally rebels against structure. Yeah. Then to have the concept of an art class, mm-hmm. and the class is structured, and art doesn't feel like it should be structured. Right. So no wonder you rebelled. Yeah, I was like this. You know, I was so <laughs> angry. I was an angsty <laughs> teenager. Wait, but I I wanted to ask. You're also in art education though well i teach not really educate i teach like an open studio okay for um uh neighborhood kids in southwest detroit it's called the alley project and but it is a form of teaching You're yeah a facilitator yeah, so, yep yep so i bring in projects yeah. you know i try to bring in just different things that they might not come across in their high school you know yeah because a lot of students at least i, I, I don't know outside of Detroit like they they're getting a lot of like advanced processes like ceramics and glass and like some of the kids in the inner city schools don't get that so I bring in like whatever I learned because I went to college for creative studies so Mm -hmm. I take that experience and I think okay how can I apply this so that you guys can be ready for you know putting together a, a portfolio your website or just coming up with characters because people especially like young kids love uh, anime. They just go crazy over of anime. Of course, they do here just in the library. identify with it so much. And 
you know, some of them really want to develop their own characters and they don't have the, they don't identify with being artists yet. They're like, oh, I like this, but I don't know if they see it as a, I don't know, like a respected thing or I don't know what it is, but they might just when not. they come in, then they leave like, oh, I'm really good at this. I'm right. an artist. You know, this is my thing. Right. And I think that's, that was really helpful for me knowing that early on. Yeah. Because I had some direction. Yeah. I wasn't like figuring it out all the time. I, I really loved art. Sure. Forever. For sure. <laughs> sure. They might not have the self-confidence to say mm-hmm. they're an artist either. Right. Too. Right. And that's a, this is so this that gives them confidence for sure like oh, like oh you're really good at this so i have them design like t-shirts or something for the class mm-hmm. I, don't know, I think that's really empowering well well however we call it education teacher facilitator if you're mm-hmm. engaging with youth and mm-hmm. you are connecting to them that is that's something marvelous it's not it's something everyone can do and it's especially not Thank something you. every artist can do sometimes the stereotypical vision is you're an artist in your studio working on your craft and you do shows and you mm-hmm. don't worry about passing it on. Right. You're just worrying about your, your next masterpiece. Thing. Yeah. You know, and I, everybody that, that asked me about this, cause I wasn't really, that wasn't really my direction. I, I had that choice when I was at CCS and I just chose like a very broad uh, department, just fine art. You can kind of do a lot of different things, but education c- kind of felt a little bit scary for me. I was mm-hmm. like, oh. It scares me too, you know, and Mm -hmm. then, and then a few of these like neighbor after school programs kind of fell in my lap and that really worked out for me. And it kind of opened me up like in my, in a new way, as far as my art practice, Mm -hmm. you kind of can't take yourself too seriously around kids because they like call you out. Oh yeah. (laughs) On everything. Our youth librarians know it all too well. You know, and and it's it was the best thing for me. It was really the best thing because I started that after leaving because I was working in in uh, the gallery world for like thirteen years, and I quit Mm -hmm. with that, and then just kind of started doing my own thing, and the the after school teaching kind of came in and just was it was the best thing that probably could have happened to me. Man, in that time, you know, for my for my art and. For a lot of things, it's just realizing like you get kind of jaded after a while. You know, you forget like the reasons why you get in passionate about music or oh, yeah. art because you work in mm-hmm. art or music. Yeah. So being around them like kind of reignited some of that passion. Like, oh yeah, this is kind of why. I like oh this, yeah. You know? Yeah, that's great. I do want to get into the the gallery world and being a gallery assistant and and aiding in aiding in the production of exhibitions and all that stuff, yes. but. Let's not get too far ahead. Let's go back to you being a teenager okay. and a six-year-old again. <laughs> uh, you know, you're on yes. a library podcast. You've never been on a library podcast. You know, uh, do you have memories of visiting your libraries in your yes. youth? Yes, yes, Tell I me, do. tell me all I about it. I have really great memories of visiting my library. One, the library in our high school was really wonderful as mm-hmm. well. But we had a local library called Bowen Branch Library in Southwest. And it was great. They would show, like, like kind of obscure old cartoons you know like they would have movie nights and they would show cartoons there's still a movie that i saw there that i have never been able to find that i do, i've tried to i don't even know how to research it but like it's blown my mind <laughs> and i'm like I i'm imagining for a child audience yeah. yes okay yes it was like a like a fairy tale or something okay. but i feel like it wasn't from the u.s i feel like maybe it was like a european or something it was obscure it was very cool did it uh you know yeah ignite your imagination yes especially the animation yeah it did yeah. it really did and and just that you can go to the to the library and get access to a lot of things you know the the kind of bad part was that that library would close mm-hmm. and there like there wasn't i think the closest one maybe was like the detroit main one downtown mm-hmm. so we would have to go to like a bookstore uh, yes. and that's what replaced the library experience but now it's back on true so, so we're good. True, that's <laughs> but pretty. But there was a lull, you know. But yeah, um, yeah. But that's pretty cool for your parents, though, to say, "All right, well, the library is closed yeah. for a second. Access to books is still important. We're yes. gonna get to the bookstore." Exactly. Yeah. And I was gonna ask again, just just to the stereotype of the the artist who was working on their own stuff. I think I don't know how many artists actually get involved in the gallery world. So right, two thousand four, two thousand five, you get into the gallery world. 
Right. Tell us about that. Yes. Because people visit galleries so, all the exactly. time. Exactly. They don't know all the. That was my first job when I was. I went to Henry Ford Community College, right? Because okay. I didn't want to go right into a university. I was really burned out after. I was a bad student. I was like so burned out <laughs> after high school. I was like, don't want to go back. But um, I'm, I'm so happy that I did because I met um, so many great people there. Now they're a college. Anyway, so I went to Henry Ford, mm-hmm. got my first gallery job there for their gallery, Sisson Art Gallery, and I was a gallery sitter there. Mm-hmm. And I got to meet a lot of wonderful artists that from then and now I've met, like I've helped install their art. Just It's been an amazing experience to still keep in touch with some of these artists that I like met when I was just, you know, I don't know, 18, 19. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. that is an art unto itself. Is yeah, arranging it, finding where it goes on the wall. Yeah, you know? yeah, and um, and you know, figuring out how the operations part of all that. I've been doing it for so long now. I don't, I don't know. I don't. It's hard. And like, I know there's a lot to say about it, but it's like it's kind of a simple thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like we just we just have receptions, and it's a lot of networking. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but there must be some things you love most about it. I gotta yes. say, just to the artists. Oh yeah, talking to the artists, supporting the artists. I think supporting the artists or figuring out a way that I could do that was the reason that I got into the gallery work. And also, I thought, oh, I'll always be immersed in art. I can still be inspired and still have my own art practice at the same time. But it takes a lot of discipline. It takes so much. I figured that out because I, I had this three-year hiatus of not doing any kind of gallery work and feeling a little bit jaded after, like, oh, I can't even go to yeah. a gallery right now. Yeah. I mean, now I kind of, I'm able to balance it more, mm-hmm. you know? Well, it's just, there's I, a lot, you know? I think that it's... Dealing with artists. What about the idea of just... And a, it helps that I'm an artist, too, yeah. because I understand where the majority of their focus is on the art. So there's all this business business practices part of it that they must kind of complete. Mm-hmm. So I, we help them kind of create a package to package themselves to be able to go out there and you right. know, show their art. Right. To be able to say, oh, do you have an artist statement? You yeah. Know? Those are all things that maybe an, uh, an artist that is self-taught, they might not, you know, they might they might not know how important it is to have these things. Just like when you're applying for anything, you know, you have to go through the their process. Right. So a gallery kind of does that all for you. So there's it's a partnership. Yeah. I was thinking about just the sense of community that must be important to have for yeah. an artist in terms of supporting them because I would presume that it's it's got to be harder than ever. Well, there's got to be ups and downs to being an artist in the 21st century yes. when people it's can... It's not easy. Right. It's when not easy. We can do... <laughs> just like it's not easy for musicians sometimes or sure. anybody. You know, it's just in the creative field in general. We could um, Google search some Dali on our phone right now and look at it, but come on. Right. Why? you got to get out into that <laughs> gallery, right? You know, so just even just the work of encouraging people and reminding them what the, you know, sort of the fulfillment of coming out to a space, mm-hmm. being in public and seeing work. Yes. And I also like it's it's a very deliberate of the valuing of the artist mm-hmm. and the art you know mm-hmm. you're doing it's we're valuing it we're putting value towards somebody's work somebody has worked hours and hours and ideas and you know that's their babies <laughs> like right. you're, thinking, you're working on um you're looking at people's you know kind of inner workings of their mind you know i love it right and then and then they're slapping a price on it so well it's true it's wild true it's so wild it sounds like we're getting on a soapbox but it's not yeah. unreasonable to be mm-hmm. asking for this the same mm-hmm. way a band would risk if they are in a bar coming their music falling into the background mm-hmm. people might walk into a room and art on the wall is just sort of their periphery mm-hmm. they just they risk taking it for granted and we can't have that right we do have to have that value placed right so, so. right and i think just creating opportunities for for other artists for artists in general, yeah, I think. I think you go to other countries, you go to Europe, like art and culture and everything is like such part of everyday life. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just everywhere. You, you're living in, you're living in it. And here there's always a separation. You yeah. know, you have to go to a place to see that. And yeah, there's public art. Now we're, we're getting in a better time where we have like a lot of these mural um initiatives and programs and grants murals in the market murals in the market and public art but it's been like a slow slow process Mm -hmm. i feel like but i'm i'm happy it's happening though you know 
I'm also happy okay. that this library has been showing art exhibitions for almost seven years now. Wow. So it was important to us. So yes. That's something I'm so we honored. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. You're going to be here in the uh, very late spring. So yes. you're hearing this. Uh, I think you're almost hearing this, folks, on Leap Day. I was going to ask, is, mm. is Leap Day something important to you? Because the cosmic solar calendar. It should, but I totally forgot. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it comes around every four years. <laughs> Come on, Dahlia. It's easy to forget. <laughs> so I wanted to ask, yeah, more about what inspires your art. Yeah. Something like that. And when do you feel like you did ever, not to not to put you in a box, mm-hmm. fall into an aesthetic or fall into themes that you like to explore when you get to a canvas or whatever you're working in? I've never, I've always tried to not be put into a box as mm-hmm. far as my the aesthetic of my work. I, I'm, I'm pretty... I guess eclectic. My music taste is very eclectic. I'm a little bit all over the place. Mm-hmm. Um, my handwriting, even like mm-hmm. it, never looks the same almost. Mm-hmm. And I think it's like because you're channeling different energies, very right? different. This is how I feel. Right. And so lately, what I've been focusing on, I was I, I got into wellness and meditation. Mm-hmm. So my last exhibitions, like the Rainbow Body one, is based off of kind of being present. And kind of using the art just to feel good, to to ascend, I mm-hmm. guess, if you will. Mm-hmm. Because I feel like I, I've been around, you know, all different kinds of art. And I wanted to create art that I needed. And I yeah. felt like maybe people might enjoy this. And it's gotten good feedback. I don't know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know. It's cre- creating something that... I want that want I want people to use it like to be functional like okay this is in my room for this reason gives me good energy that's what I'm looking for that's what I like that's why that's why I collect art because I want it to give me a good feeling you yeah know? well speaking of energy I think there there's an inherent radiance to your work mm-hmm. there's um yeah always a sense of light mm-hmm. uh sometimes there are actual sort of like sun shapes mm-hmm. um but I mean looking at especially at this uh a piece like Venus lands is very interesting to mm-hmm. me that, that there's there's some gold too there's just mm-hmm. light and mm-hmm. shininess and radiance right right that's energy yes exactly mm-hmm. exactly and, and the natural world in the natural world yep mm-hmm. so in my home I just have like plants everywhere because I the colors really do something to you the color red mm-hmm I think there's even red light therapy that people get yeah but each color has an effect and i've been making these gold pieces because of how much light it it radiates towards you and you just feel good there's yep. just something about that it's a uh, refreshing it's very refreshing so i don't know i think I've, I've i've just been exploring i don't know if i've i've gotten to where i want to but that's what i've been exploring with just color that's artistic theory we're mm-hmm. getting into yeah as well as like we're touching into the therapeutic powers of yes. art yes yes i've always been into that too okay. like, you know mental health um and i think that was kind of where my passions intersected into i don't want people to just look at and oh it's something pretty you know mm-hmm. it is but there's also a purpose yeah you know? for sure i wanted to swerve us all the way back to when you were young again yeah do you think you can remember a moment or even an epiphany i know you're only six where you realized that art was just going to be a permanent part of your life that it was going to be very important and you wanted to do it all the time was it looking at your grandparents work was it yeah, something else i think okay well, i have an image there was a poster that my my mom had and it was of a uh, gustav klimt do you know him oh yeah so it's yeah um you know he's the guy that did the kiss but there's one that's like a really erotic one actually mm-hmm. and um my parents had it and it was just like this big gold and it's of a woman and I forget her name that he kept um I don't know if you can even pull it up I think that we can I don't know if her name was Adele Adele Block Bauer yes I'm probably saying Something that like wrong that. she's just kind of doing a half flash yeah and um gold and everywhere yeah gold everywhere yeah and I thought like what is this about you know I'm like a young kid like my, my parents just have this they love it mm-hmm. like but it's you know it's of a nude woman but in it's such a beautiful way, you know, it was done in such a beautiful way. And I realized, well, maybe I understand something about art, more about art than I, I didn't realize that, you know, I, mm-hmm. I wasn't identifying as an artist then, but I just felt like, oh, why? I'm not offended by this. And yeah. I felt like, well, maybe I'm, I have some artsy qualities. Yeah. And then, and then early on, um, my neighbor across the street was an artist and mm-hmm. she would have these little arts and crafts day on her porch. 
and that's kind of how I, oh, I'm actually good at this, you that's know? Great. So it was just, I, it was the exposure, the early exposure. Yeah, and this- And the, the value, the fact that they valued these things. Yeah, you know, that, of they, course. It's beautiful, you know? I think that's what it was. It the, really turned me on to all that stuff. So. Yeah, I mean, a piece like like this that what Klimp does, there's such a fullness to it, just to remind you right. of here. Mm-hmm of what inspired you, and there's such a fullness to what you do. Oh, and, and I actually did a, I worked on a painting for Hutzel Hospital in Detroit that oh yeah? was kind of based off that painting right there. Really? But yeah, it's really cool. It was for um, somebody that used to run their NICU center. I can't remember their name. Okay. It's so terrible with names, but yeah, you could see it there if you're ever there. Such a fullness to that piece. Mm-hmm. There's a fullness to, to the what color, you do. Yeah. Too. Color and gold. And yeah. And... Uh, I don't know, maybe when you go to art school, you'll learn about minimalism Mm -hmm. and you'll learn about avant-garde. And those are things that are more challenging for an audience. But you must be thinking of your audience because you're just giving them something. You're giving them a lot. Yeah. It's not like you're showing them this abstract, weird thing. Mm -hmm. It's something that kind of goes into their heart. And it's okay if it is. Sure, sure. people are are only going to take it as far as, you know, they take everything themselves. Yeah. It's just a reflection, you know. Mm-hmm. So um, that's just how I kind of learned to experience art. Yeah. It's really interesting because you get to be around people. Mm-hmm. And, you know, sometimes it's like being around kind of really pretentious people or mm-hmm. very um, people that get more into the idea than like what it's like to experience those things. I'm into the experience like me as a person because I still identify with both. I'm mm-hmm. not just the... I take myself super seriously as an artist. Actually, it took shifting my attention to my personal practice, Mm -hmm. art practice, to feel confident about it because I was I was supporting other artists for so long in my career, you know, my jobs, that I had to um, kind of like decompress and uh, start over. You know, you kind of like that sounds like it was a really good moment for you, though. Yeah. To, yeah. to make that change. Yes. And I think it was being around the children too yeah. that helped like get to that point. That's they great. don't take themselves so seriously. It gets hard when you take yourself too seriously. Can you describe or talk about the ways in which your your creative process has worked? Because this won't be coming to our library, but you had a show in the UFO factory and those mm-hmm. pieces were like six feet mm-hmm. by six feet. Yeah, or four by four. Or four by four. Yeah, but they're big. But a variety of ways that you you make things. And I just wanted to talk about what that's like for you when you do find the free time to work. Yes. So Mm -hmm. um, I I just build my canvases, Mm -hmm. my my wood paneled, not really canvases because they're not canvas, but they're they're big wood paneled circles, big Mm -hmm. spheres that I've had to learn how to cut, you know, with a jigsaw, which is really hard. And sounds dangerous. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I was like, oh, you do it for me. So I was having my boyfriend do it for me for a little bit, but now I do it. Great. And, <laughs> but that was like a, an amazing thing to be able to, I like tools, you know, I like to be able to do it myself because it's a process. Like while I'm working on the uh, the canvas, mm-hmm. you know, everything that's gonna happen is going on. like. And while I'm in it, and I love going through that. I love just going through like regular, like thing, when I'm painting something white, you know, then I could just kind of go into autopilot mm-hmm. and then not think about it mm-hmm. until I get to actually put something on there. The cutting is part of the art. Yeah. It's part of the process. It's process. part of the thinking process. Um, all of it is. So I don't know. I like the, I like the fact that every, that I'm part of, each part of it you know I don't and I don't want to like say that you it's not good to buy canvases but it's definitely better f- for me mm-hmm. I, I like to work on a wood. from scratch situation yeah as opposed to buying pre-made pie crust right. for your pies mm-hmm. uh, but how long does that take to make a cut like it that takes two hours three no it, is it quicker uh, it's quicker okay. it takes like 20 minutes or something you're wearing a visor yes oh yes yeah and um, I'm going to figure out different ways to get, do this better because I think you okay. can buy like you can buy tools that make it easier mm-hmm. for you. But I don't do that. <laughs> How recent were those pieces? Those um, they were new. OK. The big ones. Yeah. Yeah. So I've been making these um, giant full moons. So mm-hmm. every full moon I make a full moon. Try to find people that like that. Didn't we just we have do. one? Yeah. We had a Wolverine. Yeah, the, every 
you know, I don't know. I just look into the almanac and whatever it says. Yeah. Does but that? I'm into it. I'm into that, it because it's energy. It's real energy. Right. You know, we had an art opening that night too, and I felt, um, I don't know, felt good. Yeah. I felt charged up. Yeah, I didn't feel any sort of disruptive. No. Mercury Sometimes retrograde like vibes, that. but no. I felt good vibes that yeah. that week. Yeah, it was a good week. Was that process the jigsaw process and this, you know, cosmic vortex disco, cosmic disco vortex? Yep. Mm-hmm. Was that very distinct from the way you would create, you know, Venus Garden? Is it very distinct from the very yes. latest pieces? Yeah. So the Venus Garden was a smaller gallery space, mm-hmm. and I knew that it, I knew that I needed to to take up a lot of space, but not, you know, have more work. So I worked on works on paper mm-hmm. and um, what does it mean? There were smaller works on wood as well. Mm-hmm. I really enjoyed that because it was um, trying something new, trying collage. And, I mean, I've worked in almost all like the mediums, but I feel most free with the paint. We've been talking about mm-hmm. color all this time. Mm-hmm. You're staring across at me and I'm wearing a gray shirt. We're, know, in, this, wearing we're in this right drab now. gray room. <laughs> it's a gray cloudy day. <laughs> And you're talking the, about your home. The book again. Yeah, bring the book up, <laughs> back up on the table. There it is. She brought another book. And she's got another book. But it must be key to have. Oh, what is this? This, this is, is a vintage book somebody wow. gave me, and that's also been a um, this influential is book. Tiger Flower. I was really into tigers for a long time. And it's it was, a tale by Robert Vavra and her paintings by Fleur Cowles. Uh, super 70s style. Wow. It's so beautiful. We're, we probably have to find some way to get some images in the show notes. 1968, yes. it's original copyright. Wow. Man. Isn't it beautiful? But here we are in this gray room on a gray winter <laughs> day. I imagine you must do a lot of creating, I guess, I feel like, I imagine you working at like sunrise with all your plants right? and all this color. Yes. Is, is that something yes. necessary for you? You yes. just need all that color and light? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You, you couldn't know. paint us a painting right now, clearly. Yeah. There's none. <laughs> There's just no energy in this room. But you guys need some art here. I can bring you some art. That'd be great. <laughs> you know, you are going to bring us some art. That's Do you, right. Have you thought about any pieces you want to bring to this library exhibition? I'm going to bring some new pieces. Cool. Can you tell us a little bit about yes. them? Yes. Um, so I've been working on these portals. I made one, a recent piece called uh, Sound Portal. Mm-hmm. And um, what can I say about portals? Like mm-hmm. you can just, you can, they're amazing. You can um, travel, you know, through your mind. Mm-hmm. And I think if it's, it's about meditation, but it's also, you know, a visual um, representation of sound. So mm-hmm. I don't know if you knew that um, that cosmic disco vortex. Yeah. Some of those pieces were of cymatics. So there's like the vibrations of sound. Oh. So they made these patterns. So the sound portals will be like of patterns of sound. So okay. of a frequency. So each one will be. Sorry, I had a hard time explaining that. No, but, but all right. It's hard because I haven't had a chance to explain this. This is really good, though. Right, right. But <laughs> also really asking good, any new. human being to describe art is I completely know. difficult. No, but it's really good. That's really, really cool good. because those are frequencies that are. Frequencies, uh, right. They're otherwise invisible to us. Right. So. Right. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, I was just doing some research about, you know, people that do these tests with sounds and sand and mm-hmm. it creates these um, patterns. And um, I went on these trips recently on the West Coast. I went to Palm Springs mm-hmm. and I went to this place called the Integratron. Have you ever heard of it? No, but it sounds awesome. It's an amazing place. It's like this perfectly acoustic dome that you go and they do these um like crystal bowl meditations Mm -hmm. and it just sounds amazing and um they claim that the venusian the venusian aliens gave them the key to um live forever to stay young to not age and that's through sound therapy to keep your cells happy and young you know like feeling good all those reverberations so, yep exactly mm-hmm. so being very deliberate and with um what kind of sound you're giving your body um so i thought about that i thought well what the, what would the visual you know version of that look like so i thought about these portals where you could feel those frequencies or look at it or maybe couple it with the actual sound while you're looking at it you know that's beautiful because it's the beginning as an of artist, something that's why it's hard to talk about sure <laughs> sure but I'll, I'll i'll take it even further because yes. as an art, artist you probably want to be connecting with whoever's viewing your mm-hmm. work so you want to attain a resonance right 
right exactly yes just like the sound but you want something that resonates with them right and they can literally see that when they see frequencies right yeah so i'm gonna be making some of those yeah we'll be having some circular piece pieces that's great yeah that's great. Well, we should be really excited about it. We're really excited to have you come to this library. <laughs> Thank you. I was going to ask real quick before we wrap up, you've shown in a bar in the middle of Corktown. Yes. Now you're going to show in a library. Have yes. you shown in any other sort of uh, unconventional places like that? Um, Is this, no, are we this kind of a, great. okay. Yeah. No, no. Aside from the bar. No, this will be like perfect for me. I oh, think. Yeah, we're glad to have your art in the library. You. We're looking forward yes, to the, it. The other, I think the other kind of um, interesting one was at the research center in Ann Arbor. That was in like a, at their North Complex Research Center. So they, I don't know, Pfizer owns it or something. Yeah. So they do like testings and stuff there. I thought that was an interesting place to show art. But going back to the same principle that would be in putting art in the hospital, mm-hmm. you just want people to be able to encounter it. Mm-hmm. Even if they don't have the time to get out to the gallery. Right. You can encounter it. At your library. I think we should go. Yes. We should go check out the space and and measure some spaces for you to hang this art. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me. Dahlia Reyes has been here talking about her her full, beautiful, vibrant, radiant art and a life in art and art and being a a facilitator for passing that on to the next generation and supporting your local artists, which is so important. It's what we do here at the Ferndale Library with the library's art and exhibition committee. You've been listening to A Little Too Quiet. It's the Ferndale Library podcast. It's brought to you by the friends of the Ferndale Library. If you want to support this podcast, you can just go to ferndalefriends.org where you can join or donate. You can always reach us too if you want to send us a message. It's podcast at ferndalepubliclibrary.org. The music you've been listening to is by John Duffy. I'm Jeff Milo. Kelly Bennett's producing. Dolly Rays, thanks for being here. Thank you so much. And thank you for listening.